In a previous video, we have looked at the description of discrete time signals and systems in the time domain. However, it is not convenient to do many operations and analysis in the time domain. For this reason, we introduce the Z-transform in this video. We look at the definition of the Z-transform and apply it to common discrete time signals. We also look at some Z-transform properties and use them to convert time domain signals to, to the Z-domain and back. We start with the definition of the Z-transform. The Z-transform of signal X of K is written as capital X and parameterized in terms of the complex variable lowercase z. The Z-transform is defined as the infinite sum from k equal to 0 to infinity of signal x of k times z to the power minus k. Written out as a series, the Z-transform is the value of signal x at time step 0 plus the value of signal x at time step 1 times z to the minus 1 plus the value of signal x at time step 2 times z to the power minus 2, etc. The Z-transform is a one-sided transform. The signal values for negative time indices are ignored. The signal values for non-negative time indices can always be recovered from the Z-transform. Let's now look at the Z-transform of a number of common discrete time signals. These and several others are usually given in Z-transform tables. In this video, we only state these transforms and use them in examples. We will prove some of them at a later stage. The Z-transform of the digital impulse is equal to 1. The Z-transform of a unit step is equal to Z divided by Z minus 1. The Z-transform of a unit ramp where the signal values are given by the time index k times the sampling period t is equal to z times t divided by z minus 1 squared. The z-transform of an exponential signal where the signal values are given by the exponential function of minus constant a times time index k times sampling period t is equal to z divided by z minus e to the power minus a t. The Z-transform of a sinusoidal function, described as the cosine of constant omega times the time index k times sampling period t, is equal to Z squared minus Z times cos of omega t divided by Z squared minus 2 times Z times cos of omega t plus 1. Next, we look at six properties of the Z-transform where we look at what operations in the time domain amounts to in the Z domain. We will again only state the properties and use them in examples. We will prove some of them at a later stage. Property 0 is numbered 0 since it is not in the textbook but is still important to know about. Since the Z-transform is a linear operation, we can say that the Z-transform of a sum of scaled signals is the scaled sum of the Z-transform of the individual signals. Property 1 says that the Z-transform of a signal delayed by n time steps is Z to the power minus n times the Z-transform of the unshifted signal. Property 2 says that the Z-transform of a signal advanced by n time steps is Z to the power n times the Z-transform of the unshifted signal minus z to the power n times y at 0 all the way down to minus z times y at n minus 1. For property 3, we apply the z-transform to a signal that is formed as the cumulative sum of another signal y. At each time step k, the signal in the z-transform is the sum of the first k values of signal y. We can therefore think of this as the discrete time integration of signal y. The z-transform of this is the z-transform of y times z divided by z minus 1. Property 4 says that the z-transform of constant a to the power of the time index k times signal y 
is the Z transform of signal Y, but with Z replaced by Z divided by A. Property 5 says that the Z transform of time index K times signal Y is equal to minus Z times the derivative of the Z transform of Y in terms of Z. We will see that we use properties 0 to 2 very often, whereas we use the other properties less often. To illustrate the Z-transform and its properties, let's work through a few simple examples. On this page, we look at two examples of calculating the Z-transform of signals. For the first example, we calculate the Z-transform of an impulse. Although we can read the answer from the Z-transform tables, we can use the Z-transform of the unit step and Z-transform properties to get the same result. We can describe the impulse as a unit step minus a unit step delayed by one time step. If this is not obvious to you, we can plot the unit step and a time delayed unit step. And if we subtract the latter from the former, it should now be clear that we get an impulse. We can therefore calculate the Z transform of an impulse as the Z transform of the difference between unit steps. From property zero, we can write this as the difference of the Z-transform of unit steps. And we then use property 1 to write that the Z-transform of a unit step delayed by one time step is Z to the power minus 1 times the Z-transform of an unshifted unit step. We now use the entry in the Z-transform tables for the unit step. And after some manipulations, we get an answer of 1 which is the same as that of the Z-transform tables. For the second example, we consider a system described by this difference equation and where an impulse is applied to the input of the system. We want to know the Z-transform of the output of the system. That is, we want to calculate the Z-transform of the impulse response of the system. To solve this problem, we simply apply the Z-transform to both sides of the difference equation. We substitute delta of k for r of k and then we use property 0 to get this expression. The left hand side is simply y of z. We use property 1 to write the first term on the right hand side as 0 0.95 times z to the power minus 1 times y of z. And we use the Z-transform tables to write the Z-transform of an impulse as 1. We now gather the terms with Y of Z on the left-hand side. And after some manipulations, we get Y of Z equal to Z divided by Z minus 0 0.95. We now turn our attention to the inverse Z-transform, where we are given the Z-transform of a signal. And we want to determine the corresponding time domain signal. We consider several approaches which we illustrate using examples. On this page, we write the Z-transform of the relevant signal in such a form that we can use the Z-transform tables to find the corresponding time domain signal. In the first example, we consider the Z-transform of Z divided by Z minus 0 0.95, and we wish to find the time domain signal Y of K. We use this entry in the Z-transform tables. The Z-transform of e to the power minus a k t is equal to Z divided by Z minus e to the power minus a t. The Z-transform table entry is equal to the given Z-transform if e to the power minus a t is equal to 0 0.95. To get the corresponding time domain signal, we rewrite e to the power minus a k t as e to the power minus a t to the power k, which is equal to 0 0.95 to the power k for our example. Since the Z-transform is a one-sided transform, the corresponding time domain signal is 0 for negative time indices and 0 0.95 to the power k for non-negative time indices. This can also be written as 0 0.95 to the power k times a unit step. 
In the second example, we wish to find the time domain signal corresponding to z divided by z minus 0 0.5 times z plus 0 0.3. Since this form is typically not found in the Z-transform tables, we use partial fraction expansion to first write it as the sum of simpler forms before we apply the Z-transform tables. However, we first divide by Z before we do the partial fraction expansion. The reason for this will become apparent in a moment. We calculate the residuals as 1.25 and minus 1.25, which gives us this result for the partial fraction expansion. We now multiply with z to give us this expression where the numerators all contain z. Since most of the entries in the z transform tables have z in the numerators, we can now, now directly apply the z transform tables. We again make use of the z transform of an exponential signal which produces 1.25 times 0 0.5 to the power k minus 1.25 times minus 0 0.3 to the power k for non-negative time indices and zero everywhere else. We can again write the answer in terms of the unit step function as shown here. Another way to calculate the inverse z-transform is by using long division. We apply it to the second example of the previous page where we wish to find the time domain signal of z divided by z squared minus 0 0.2 times z minus 0 0.15. The idea of long division is to find an infinite series that when multiplied with a denominator gives us the numerator. For long division we place the numerator here and the denominator here. z goes into the first term of the denominator z to the power minus 1 times z to the power minus 1 times the denominator is given by this and when subtracted from z results in 0 0.2 plus 0 0.15 times z to the power minus 1. 0 0.2 goes into the first term of the denominator 0 0.2 times z to the power minus 2 times. 0 0.2 times z to the power minus 2 times the denominator gives us this and when subtracted from this gives us 0 0.19 times z to the power minus 1 plus 0 0.03 times z to the power minus 2. We can repeat this process until we have a sufficient number of terms. x of z is now given by this infinite series and when we compare it with the definition of the z transform we see that the coefficients of the infinite series are the values of the corresponding time domain signal. Long division is a good method to quickly find the first few values of a time domain signal but not to find an analytic description of the signal. We end this video with an example that combines a number of the ideas we discussed today. We revisit the problem of a previous video where we are given a system described by this difference equation we apply an impulse to the input of the system and we wish to calculate its output. For this example, we will use the Z-transform and inverse Z-transform to solve it. The first step is to apply the Z-transform to both sides of the difference equation, substitute delta of k for r of k and use the Z-transform tables and property 1 to write the Z-transform of a delayed impulse as z to the power minus 1 times 1. After some manipulations, we write y of z as 1 divided by z minus 0 0.95. This form is not present in the z-transform tables, so we multiply and divide by z to give us this expression. We label this part as x of z, and y of z is therefore written as z to the power minus 1 times x of z. x of z is in a form that is present in the z-transform tables and we find the corresponding time domain signal as x of k equal to 0 0.95 to the power k times a unit step. From this expression and property 1, 
we can also say that y of k is equal to x of k delayed by one time step, which we can write as 0 0.95 to the power k minus 1 times a unit step delayed by one time step. This means that y of k is given as 0 0.95 to the power k minus 1 for positive time indices and 0 everywhere else. When we plot signals x and y, we see that signal y is equal to signal x delayed by one time step. In this video, we have looked at describing discrete time signals using the Z-transform. In the next video, we will look at how to use the Z-transform to describe discrete time systems.